Okay, so it's obviously later than it was when I made my last video from the debate tournament. Now, preliminary rounds are over for middle school anyway. Elims for high school are about to come out. Elims for middle school already came out. My kid did break the quarterfinals. So, you know, it started with, I don't know, 40 kids or so. It's down to eight. But it, was, it broke from like 40 to eight. So, um, he made the break, which is great. Uh, interesting field. Two Academy of Higher Learning kids. To some other place, I don't remember the name of it, it starts with a P, um, hit each other in breaks. They, there's a walkover. If, like, they don't break brackets. So, one hits eight, two hits seven, three hits six, four hits five. But if you hit your own teammate, it's a walkover, which means you don't actually debate it out. Your coach picks who, go, who advances. <laughs> so, anyway. I'm one of that school. We'll make it into uh, a semis. And probably, possibly one of the AHLs will make it. Um, hopefully my kid beats one of the AHLs. But, uh, it's cool. His dad showed up just in time to see breaks posted. And yeah, his kid broke. Uh, it's cool also because I was very confident he would break today. And... I, he did, you know, it's like, I like it when realities and expectations align, when I can accurately predict that my kid's going to be one of the top 20% at, after four prelim rounds, sufficient to break anyway, that's, that's nice, and I don't normally make that kind of prediction, it seems kind of like jinxing yourself, but I just knew, it's like, he's super prepped today, he's prepped as fuck. I heard his last three minute speech in one of his prelims. Man, did he kill it. This this kid's turning into a fucking beast before my very eyes. Just like the last couple of tournaments, he's just. I am attaining my full ENTP hood. Beware, opponents. So, obviously, you're not supposed to smoke weed on their, the Catholic girls' school campus, so. I don't even park in there a lot. I just park across the street. Come out here and smoke weed. Car. <sighs> cigarettes, too. You know, I let us smoke cigarettes on that campus, obviously. Uh, it's a all-girls, Catholic, middle school, and high school. And so one of the exciting adventures I get to experience today is let's see what it's like being a woman at a sporting event that has... Not very many bathrooms total, an equal number of men and women bathrooms. Well, then you see all the women waiting in line, and the men are all just coming in and going in and out of the bathroom, right? Well, this school, it's got like six open girls' rooms, women's and girls' bathrooms, and one bathroom open for the, for the men and the boys. This morning, I went in there, and there was a line for the crapper. There's one sit-down toilet for men and boys open at this entire school today, and, you know... There's a shit ton of people here. I mean, well, not, not a shit ton. At least a couple hundred, a few hundred. I don't know. So, fortunately, I didn't have to poop. I would have had to wait in the line like a bitch. <laughs> like a lady does. <laughs> the, uh, ladies, I feel you. I feel you. That sucks, you know. And that's why next time I go to a festival... I'm going to encourage all the women to just go around to the other women and cup their hands and say, here, you can just pee in my hands, like this. And then they'll squat down and pee, like that. I thought coming into uh, Rachel the other day, Catholic school girls' school uniforms are absolutely ridiculous. So I, I haven't seen any here today. It's Saturday, so there aren't any, like, Catholic school girls here. But, um, I mean, there aren't any kids in uniform, basically. But the point I'm making is, I saw a sign inside there where it said, you know, rules about, it was actually about free dress, but I'm sure the same rules apply to their skirts at school, too. Skirts must be no more than four inches above the knee. 
Okay, so if that's their same approach for their plaid Catholic school girl skirts, it's like, who the fuck made this decision that Catholic high school girls would be dressed in short plaid skirts and, you know, like white see-through blouses or whatever. Uh, it's just fucking crazy. The wire. Hey, I want my kid to go to that school where they dress all the girls up like they're getting ready for dirty debutantes. Um, <laughs> it's nuts. I remember I used to work at a private school, Bay, and same thing. They had uniforms for the girls. Here's the thing about girls' school uniforms. The girls are given two choices. Either, like, like super boring mom kind of slacks things, or incredibly short skirt. You know, it's like, and, and the, of course the girls in school, what do they always do? I remember every day they always used to get in trouble with Mr. Daly because they'd roll up their skirts to make them go up higher than they naturally go. And, of course, Rebe was school with stairs. Everybody had to go up and down, up to, you know, in the high school, was on the highest floor. It was on the fourth floor. And the middle school was on the third floor. Elementary school on the second floor. And the stairs were fairly steep. So, it's like, all day, every day, walking up and down the stairs, it, you had to, had to, you have to discipline yourself to not look up, or you're just going to get just this wash of panties. Notice, I never had any such issues with the boys in the school, right? And they're like, oh, Jesus, I better watch how I look or I'm going to see this kid schlong, right? It, it, that never happened. So what the fuck is it with Catholic schools and their, their you know, like, porning up of of underage kids or private schools in general. And I, I get it, the kids, the high school girls will porn themselves up plenty. You don't gotta create a school uniform for them to do that. And even if you create a modest school uniform, they'll find ways to porn it up as much as possible. I get that. I'm not trying to say that this is all sourced from the adults or whatever. But I am trying to say, when did that become the standard? And why? It had to be some perv who designed the fuck out of that school uniform model, that, that archetype, you know? He's like, hey, hey, hey. shorter, <laughs> more skin. Okay, well, that's just my thoughts about Catholic schools or private schools in general and their silly school uniform shit. School uniforms are dumb. I don't want to wear a uniform. Who wants to wear a uniform? Nobody wants to wear a uniform. Well, you got to if you're like a cop or something, obviously. That's fine. You know, it's necessary for you to wear uniforms so that people know what your sort of societal role slash job is. But there's no reason to announce to the world that your societal role slash job is Catholic schoolgirl. <sighs> I understand the reasoning behind it in terms of like, well, you know, kids get... There's all this social stuff associated with clothing and what you wear and what you don't wear. And it relieves the parents and the kids having to make decisions about what to wear all the time in school. But it doesn't really. Because there's always free dress passes. And then, you know, it's a big fucking mess. If they had a school uniform policy that never varied or wavered at all. At least then. It wouldn't make things more challenging and difficult for everybody. Um... And the uniform should be like a jumpsuit for everybody. <laughs> if you're going to go uniform, go fucking hardcore. Get a leotard single piece jumpsuit for everybody. And just like neutral gray. Or overalls for everybody with like work shirts underneath them. Or make everyone wear a sassy pantsuit. A sassy 1970s era pantsuit 
would be an excellent school uniform. Nobody's going to find that too sexy. Okay, uh, regardless, I mean, I certainly know how it was when my daughter was a teenager and how, even to this day, she not only does not like to dress particularly modestly, but she gets very finger wag, sassy feminist if you try to suggest that maybe she should put on a little bit more clothes, you know? So, uh, I learned early on with Delilah, don't even go there. <laughs> or is he going to get this feminism critique? Don't you slut shame me. I'm not slut shaming you. I'm just saying you look like a slut. <laughs> you know, that's all. Dad, this is the problem with society or whatever. Oh. Um. I mean, I don't think it's a problem. I like looking at slutily dressed chicks. Just, you're my daughter, so, you know, <laughs> maybe tone it down a little bit. In general, I would say that this sort of applies to everybody under college age. I feel that general sort of paternal thing towards, like, okay, well, I get your womanhood and everything, but... You're only 15, 16 years old. Why don't you just chill out for a couple of years? You can be as slutty as you want once you're legal. Until then, just, you know, enjoy the lingering remnants of your adolescence with as much innocence as you can retain, which won't be much. <laughs> you know, I get it. Kids these days, they start, they're sexually active very young. I didn't have sex the first time until I was 18 years old. So, I think that's uncommon now, maybe. Or maybe it depends on the kids, the demographic population. I suspect that... Well, I, I know, for one thing, though, those things can be deceiving. Like, you might be, you might think, well, oh, a bunch of nerds and uh, academic achievers in debate. Debate camp must be fairly innocent. Ooh, no. Um... That movie, American Pie, where that girl says, it's one time at band camp. Supposedly, apparently, and I believe to be the case, that the guy who wrote that movie, he was actually talking about debate camp. But he made bag, band camp for, worked better for the movie, I guess. Because that's what debate camp's like. Debate camp's a weird place where it doesn't really matter. All, all the normal social things, like what gives you social capital or dating capital, we come replace the debate camp by one thing. Are you the best debater? <laughs> you know, or how good are you? If you're the best debater at debate camp, you got your pick of the chicks. If you're the best debater at debate camp and you're a chick, you get your pick of the dudes. Supposedly. I don't know. I've never been to debate camp, but that's what I hear from uh, debaters and <clears throat> former debaters and former debaters turned coaches and stuff like that so uh apparently it's pretty much like that <laughs> uh i heard some interesting stories from one of my former debaters who was definitely objectively in high school among the best in the country in ld his sister he 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 ended up coaching his own sister after that and uh she was she like broke records in terms of like toc biz and shit she was just astonishingly good immaculate heart he made it for Immaculate Heart, another Catholic school, Catholic high school in L.A. And Immaculate Heart is not known for their debate program, but because David's little sister went there, he took over their coaching their LD program. And, of course, Danielle, his sister, uh, she had been around the debate community for quite some time, knew all about debate because her brother had done it. First for me, then in high school for Wheeler, my the assistant coach that's here today. And uh, then he started coaching. So anyway, uh, ENTP, David Dodge. His sister? I don't know. I don't know what she is. I never really knew her very well. She was a couple two years too young for me to coach when I was at Rebay. By the time I was out of Rebay, um, well, she ended up going, you know, whatever. Doesn't matter. 
the end. I gotta go see my kid's probably just about done with that Elam round. And I gotta go see if I got a ballot. And I gotta go see if there's awards, because if there is, my kid probably won a speaker award since he broke and only eight kids broke. Uh but he might not have, but um if he did I gotta go collect it. If he if they run awards for speaker awards while he's debating. That's it. Goodbye.